Hello everyone, my name is Mira Rambisoon and I work for mental health charity Lancashire Mind. I'm here to talk to you today about a big part of accessibility, um, the, the more invisible side um, of accessibility, uh, this mental health illness and making life for passengers, making life easier for passengers and staff. Just a quick run through of today's talk. Who I am, a little bit about me, um, why we're having this conversation. I'll be looking at uh, who feels what from the passenger perspective, then going over to operator's perspective and some messengers and um, best practice from providers. Um, some food for thought and uh, yeah, a few questions for yourself. So I worked in passenger transport 15 years. Um, I started life with Mr. Stephen Joseph, um, having worked for the then Transport 2000 as a campaigner, um, now campaign for better transport. Um, I've also been a journalist and written for several passenger transport magazines. And then most latterly, I worked for seven years for the TAS partnership um, as a transport consultant, focusing largely on communications, um, profile raising, but also in my own time, mental health. Uh, and I now work for Lancashire Mind, um, which is my local mental health charity. So I've moved out of transport, but it's still very close to my heart. So I'm passionate really about, I've been passionate in my, my career about improving public transport, but also now helping people to feel better um, and helping to talk out about mental health. Um, I've suffered from depression and anxiety for decades on and off. Um, I've also worked hard on um, doing something about it, you know, whether that's counselling, medication. So, you know, I'm in a much better place than I have been previously. Um, but I'm very, very passionate um, about raising awareness. Um, I did some research. This was before um, Professor Mackett's excellent research. I did some rough and ready research. Um, and started writing articles in the passenger transport arena about my experiences with mental health uh, and what can be done to help passengers and staff. So, why are we having this conversation? As pointed out in the recent and excellent Smart Transport article on mental health, their latest edition, um, it's kind of a big deal. One in four people experience mental health issues in any given year in the UK. One in five people are anxious a lot or all of the time. And one in six employees suffers from mental health issues, whilst one in 10 people living with a severe and enduring mental health condition. So there's a lot of it about. And in short, mental health is as important as physical health. We all have it. Um, and you know, whether, despite the, the, the technical side of transport, transport provision, you know, timetables and the mechanics of the back office and the mechanics of the services itself, um, it, it's, it's run by human beings, it's used by human beings, and uh, it's an industry which creates and relies heavily on controlling variables also struggling to fight with those variables, whether that's congestion or roadworks or ludicrous politicians, so forth. So everyone has mental health. We're all human. And up to a point, stress and anxiety is very normal. But um, beyond that point, when things start becoming not OK, um, mental health illness is a thing. It's real. It's very painful. It can be hugely debilitating. So raising well-being for staff and passengers is, to me, a win-win situation. Happy staff will mean pr more productive staff and people enjoy their, their work more in, in providing the transport services. And happy pan passengers are, are what we all want in a, in a, a transport service, surely. Um, everyone has a right to accessible public transport. That's the, the nature of public transport. So reducing the barriers transport means that more people will use it and although my talk today doesn't focus on the physical side of things um 
accessibility has historically focused on physical um, disability and barriers and, and encouraging mobility from that side of things. Yeah, you know, this is very much the hidden, more invisible side of things. Why this conversation from me? I went to a bolt out of the blue conference in 2016. I found out about something called the Mental Health and Transport Summit. That's mentioned also in uh, Smart Transport's excellent article. Um, I shoehorned myself in a week before um, it was full, but I got there and it was just fantastic. It, two things close to my heart, public transport, mental health. We heard from people directly um, about how difficult it can be from a passenger perspective to use public transport, the actual nightmarish, painful experiences people can have, um, whether that's people suffering from agoraphobia, to various types of anxiety. Um, we heard from operators about what they're doing to help and support their wealth of mental wealth, health and well-being of their own staff, and also passengers. And um, yeah, that day it it yeah, not to me for six. So I thought well, I wanted to scratch a bit deeper. I wanted to find out more. So I, rather than just it be a conference I visit, I wanted to uh, keep the conversation going, do something about it myself. So I did a bit of rough and ready research and so not comparable to Professor Mackett's um, excellent research, but I surveyed about 200 people. Um, on the one hand, I surveyed passengers, people who um, I contacted via Anxiety UK, by Bus Users UK, uh, friends on Facebook, um, friends in my network, um, and asked them how much, uh, whether mental health and mental health illness affects them and, and how much that might affect their use of public transport. I also surveyed staff um, by various operator networks from the Confederation for Passenger Transport to the Urban Transport Group to um, Album Association of Local Bus Managers and uh, asked them about their own mental health support might, and training that might be offered to them, um, how they felt about their company's support on mental health for both staff and passengers. And although I've suffered from mental health myself, sorry, and I've, I should mention um, this image of a toilet seat. Um, I wanted to do something because I know how awful mental health illness can be. This is actually the picture of the toilet at the TAS partnership that I used to go and um, regularly seek sanctuary in and, and cry and break down or just get away from everyone. And if I can help others not yeah, if I can help others in any way, then that's why we're having this conversation. So, despite knowing about mental health myself a bit, um, there's a lot I don't know about it. There's so many different illnesses out there. And as part of um, the research and writing up the findings of my surveys, I went onto the different websites, especially um, the National Mind Mental Health Charity website, and looked and read up on lots of different mental health illnesses um, and just briefly um, you know it ranges so very much and these are some quotes from people suffering from various illnesses a lot of the illnesses I looked for common grounds and a lot of the common grounds I spotted were a lot of the illnesses focus at, 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 at there's a consumption of fear anxiety and worry with many many illnesses driven by fear of by a particular trigger or triggers that will result in a particular chain of events. And it's worrying about the harm, an envisaged outcome of harm, um, meaning that there's a lot of threats and foreboding and negativity around a lot of mental health illness. There's a lot of control versus avoidance issues. So many of the illnesses centre around control or lack of it. Um, Self-esteem and self-confidence are very much affected. And space is definitely a factor. Space, um, both the known and unknown spaces. So panic attack, anxiety, and particularly agoraphobia permeated 
by a fear of space, fear of the unknown or open space. Um, then conversely, sort of crowding, fear of being around people can cause panic. And some of the symptoms seem to be triggered by a sense of closing in, a sense of sensory suffocation. Energy, rest, heartbeat, breathing also at the core of a lot of the illnesses. Um, sleep can be affected very detrimentally. There's restlessness that can, can, be, can occur. And all of this is frankly is, is exhausting both emotionally and physically. So anything that can minimise that worry, that stress, that that's that all encompassing feelings of you know worry or foreboding, anything that can increase confidence is is a positive thing. So on the passenger survey side of things. I asked many questions about mental health and use of public transport and a lot of people, 80%, said they experienced mental health and, and a hell of a lot of people um, are put off or never use public transport as a result of mental illness, 49% here in the research that I did. It's an awful lot of people. I asked, why are people put off? And a lot of the responses centred around feeling trapped, um, centred around that space factor that I've highlighted, um, fear of crowding, fear around being around people, there's a sense of pressure of time, um, having to rush to buy a ticket, knowing where to get the right information to get on a particular service, as well as getting that service at a particular time. And a lot of people, I've <laughs> mentioned toilets, not a lot in this presentation, said actually access of not being able to get to the toilet is a big source of insecurity. There's also pressure, pressure of having to converse with somebody. Uh, and then converse to that, idea of interaction and crowding there's also a sense of vulnerability people said they felt alone um, and not having staff on hand to ask for help really was a big factor as well so people really want a, a people presence this is a, a quote that shows the powerfulness of some of the feelings around how mental illness can affect the use of public transport. People want to know help is at hand. They want certainty, they want reassurance. They said they wanted clear, accessible information, friendly customer service, uh, good communication on the day of travel, better ways of being able to con communicate their own needs. Uh, also more detailed information support online. And here are some messages for operators. Talk to people with mental illness who find, find travelling difficult. Train your staff and get transport professionals to talk to mental health professionals. I can't emphasise that more. Talk to people that to find out their needs directly. I'm going to whiz through the operator perspective. A lot of staff who are familiar with mental health experience, whether themselves or a colleague, somebody else. But at the time the research was conducted, 2017, 28% only had had training, 28% only had received support. So a lot more to be done there. But when I asked, spoke to staff and operators, they, you know, there was a lot of willingness to change that, 98% said they would like their company to be more proactive on mental health issues. Also look at the support on offer, there's quite a variety here, listed here. And to come to what operators are doing, so much um, has been already done and so much more is being done um, to raise awareness and be more proactive, which is wonderful. And again, the Smart Transport article 
highlights some very good practice. Um, local to me, Blackpool Transport Services have worked with Lancashire Mind, who I now work for, and trained um, 70 of their staff, 70 of 650 staff, um, to be wellbeing ambassadors and offer something called Be the Shoulder support to colleagues, which is wonderful. They've also visited Transport for London and uh, another company to learn from best practice. So fantastic to to learn from what's going on already, not reinvent the wheel. Nottingham City Transport has for years been offering one in four people training as part of the driver CPC, uh, which covers mental health, which is great. And uh, Stagecoach launched a big campaign in 2018. They got uh, this lady on the right, Michelle Hargreaves, to lead up um, as people change director to lead up the wellbeing work. Uh, they set up wellbeing champions and representatives for each regional bus company. So much more. More recently, Transport for London are updating an app called TFL Go, which will highlight times which are going to be the busiest at tube stations and allow anxious customers to see times to avoid, which is great. And a fantastic calm corner has been set up in summer night 2019 um, by Virgin Trains. Um, the calm corner is a, a room with very calming colours and plants. Uh, the furniture and lighting have been designed in a certain way. There's a children's play table. There's photos of the old station to help tr trigger positive memories for passengers with dementia and uh, a rail point totem which offers helpful advice. So that's fantastic. Some comments here from s operators on mental health I found very powerful, um, highlighting an appetite to do more, but also the quote that struck me. As a company, we don't concentrate on these issues at all, as they are there are always bigger fish to fry. So acknowledging maybe mental health is important but not as important as some of the other priorities and um, I would argue actually it is a big priority to be taken seriously something for you to think about what could you do so I'm asking you to have a think about what policies and support mechanisms are in place in your organization do you yourself have access to information training and do you provide others with it there are so many different types of mental illnesses um, out there. I still sort of getting to, to learn about it myself. But looking at the common themes um, and identifying common needs by going out and actually talking to people. It's all very well to read my research and the excellent research of Professor Mackett, but go beyond the statistics, contact local and national groups such as your local mind, Anxiety UK, find out the barriers firsthand and then see what reasonable adjustments can most benefit. And a lot of the things that passengers have told me that they wanted focus around strong customer service that can benefit everybody benefit those with more phys physical accessibility needs um, as well. Um, good, strong customer service. But my key advice is also don't forget your own staff. Start with the mental health of your own staff. Um, what What's being done there and what more can be done? And then how can you train your staff to also spot signs and look out for mental health issues within fellow staff. So what do you think? Do you think that uh, mental health is a big fish to fry? I'd like to end by reading a quote from somebody who responded to the survey who worked in for a, a transport provider and has also suffered with mental health issues themselves. Persons with mental health issues often do not like issues which deviate from the habitual norm. The nature of public transport is that it can be a chaotic environment, often subject to factors beyond its control. If the two worlds collide, then you may have a vulnerable person scared to approach a member of staff who themselves is agitated by a stressful situation. Both need to be protected here and this should be recognised. Ticking boxes just will not do. I hope this has given you some food for thought. Um, please get in touch with me um, 
my email address is on one of the slides and um yeah also look after yourselves look after your own mental well-being and health and um if anything don't stop at this talk talk to people to find out more um there are many organizations that can help educate on mental health and um it's a hugely positive thing which if you do do things on mental health celebrate it let people know what you're doing and uh, be proud of it thanks very much thank you